let's make a 1930s hat. While I have done some millinery in my life, I wouldn't say I'm a confident hat maker. And to get the close fitting cloche style of the 1920s and 30s, I knew I would need the help of a pattern. I found this one from Mrs. Depew on Etsy for hats from 1932, and I chose it mostly because it came in my size. I used a scrap of fabric from my stash as this pattern only needed three quarters of a yard of fabric according to the pattern, or 70 centimeters. This black brocade I originally used for an 1870s dress and I've been holding onto it for years knowing it would one day come in useful and I was right. The pattern piece for the hat was an incredibly weird shape so I cut it out as accurately as I could and began transferring all the markings with my chalk pencil. Getting all these weird spidery bits of the pattern to match up was a bit of a challenge as they were seams that turned into darts that were all curved and all slightly different. I did my best to match the sewing lines of the darts but I knew this was going to be tricky to sew. I usually like to batch my tasks and pin all the darts at once but this wasn't going to be possible on this hat so I pinned and then machined each dart come seam individually. All five of them. I didn't know what I would have done on this project had I not had a tailor's ham to press these seams over. Once all the seams were in place, this thing suddenly transformed into a 3D object, so there was no way I could get it flat on my ironing board. The brim of the hat was all one piece with the ties that form a bow at the back. So they were pinned right sides together, machined in place, and then bagged out and pressed. Where the ties met the hat, there was a bit of an awkward corner, and I'm not sure I dealt with it neatly, but oh well. Then the center back seam had to be machined closed. Only the first time I did it, the hat ended up too big, so I moved the seam over a bit and made it smaller. I then had to hem the raw edge at the centre back, but there wasn't really enough seam allowance to do a double fold, so I just turned it up once and tacked it in place. At that awkward corner where the ties become the brim and join up to the crown, I also had to turn under the raw edge of the brim section and secure it on the wrong side. I tacked that in place, ready to machine it later. You can see I did all this over a tailor's ham to keep the hat in the correct shape. With everything tacked, I folded the brim into position and pressed it, again, over the tailor's ham. To stop the raw edge at the centre back from fraying, I machined the hem in place with a zigzag stitch. This would be covered by the bow anyway, so I didn't mind the messier look of the zigzag stitches. When I got to the awkward corner, I switched to a straight stitch, pivoted around all the weird angles, and then top stitched the hem of the brim in place. Despite making it smaller, the hat was still too big, and so I decided to add a grosgrain hat band on the inside. I only had navy blue grosgrain, but I measured how much I would need and then overlapped the ends and zigzagged it in place. I then had to ease the too big hat onto the grosgrain band so I matched the centre backs and then found the halfway point of the band and the hat and matched those up. Then I did the same again for the quarters and then I could evenly distribute the excess around the circumference of the band. I then simply whip stitched the grosgrain band in place by hand. At this point I was pretty happy with how it was fitting, but I did wonder if it needed more decoration because it was looking a bit like a baseball cap or something. In the end I decided against the ribbon and trusted that with the hair and get up it would look more 1930s. Now despite the fact I literally had an entire lecture at university on how to tie a bow tie in which we were made to practice on our thighs, I struggled for ages to get this bow to work. I did eventually remember what I was doing and came up with something that looked decent, but it took an embarrassingly long time to tie a stupid bow. After all that struggling, there was no way I was ever going to do that again, and so I stitched the bow in place, stabbing through to the grosgrain ribbon for support. And then the hat was complete. Despite my fears, I think it turned out really cute. I think this was one of those vintage items that out of context just doesn't work and only comes to life when you add the entire rest of the look. This is actually a 1980s dress, but the hat makes it feel so perfectly 30s. I'm not entirely happy with the brim. I think it could have done with some interfacing as it started to stretch and distort out of shape, but I must admit, despite the fact they were a nightmare to sew, I love the seam detail on the crown. 
But my favorite bit has got to be the bow on the back. Maybe it's because I struggled so much, but I just feel it's the perfect shape and size and sticks out at the perfect jaunty angle. So to say this was a quick project thrown together from scrap fabric, I think it turned out really well. It makes me feel like a movie star, and that's exactly what I want from my 1930s wardrobe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.